if you are an estate agent, letting agent, or someone who is interested in the UK property market, then the UK property market stat show is for you. My name is Chris Watkin, and today I'm joined by James Forrester, who is big in the game, one of uh, Birmingham's biggest estate agents, and is constantly on national news commenting about the property market. We'll come to James in a second. The purpose of this show is to find out exactly what is happening in the UK property market. Like I say most weeks, most stats about the property market are three, six, or even nine months old. These are the stats which are happening right here, right now. We are talking about how many properties are coming on the market, what they're selling for, what price reductions, what 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 average price of houses that are actually selling, and 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 sales that are falling through. Why is this important? Because everybody talks about the bottom end of the funnel. We're talking about the top end of the funnel. And it, what comes in at the top comes out at the bottom. So by watching this show, you'll get an idea of exactly what is happening in the UK property market right here, right now. So today I'm joined by James Forrester, who is not uh, shy at all when it comes to being in front of the camera. He is over quite a lot of TV shows, and he's also in the printed press. He knows his stuff when it comes to property. James, uh, you're the boss man, as I said, of Barris and Forrester in Birmingham and the West Midlands. Thanks for joining me today. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Great to be on. Yeah, I like to be a little controversial. The only thing the stats I don't like to talk about is their fall-throughs. I don't think any agent likes to talk about fall-throughs. <laughs> it doesn't, but we're going to talk about that and actually look at the context and the percentages they're in. So let us, should we crack on and actually deep dive into the stats? Because nobody want, nobody's coming here to listen to our banter. And we're going to go straight in at the top and look at the number of new instructions this week. So... The number of new instructions this week. So we're talking, we're talking about week 18. Now, for those of you that want to know what week 18 is, week 18 is Monday the 1st of May to Sunday the 7th of May 2023. And the week 18 is whatever it was in those relevant years. And um, so we're on 31,740 listings. Just to give you a flavor, boys and girls, of where we have been in the last week or last month, average number of listings that we've had in the last four weeks has been an average of 33,192. So we're just slightly down on the running average. What's your thoughts on the fact is, is that listings are slightly down? Well, it, this actually shocks me a little bit because I actually thought uh, they would have been down to 2021. Um, because if you think about it, 2021 was probably the best time to sell your house uh, because interest for buyers interest rates were low record low um you were getting so many incentives thrown at you anyway you know uh stamp don't forget we had the huge stamp duty holiday as well uh to to get in there so i'm actually quite shocked at the high of in 2021 but overall when you look at this this is a real positive sign this is showing that all the negative people out there especially on social media and look we're on social media discussing this the ones who will be predicting 30 40 percent price drops it's all going to happen it's not showing it the market is showing the strength and everyone can have their own opinions but i'm a big believer stats don't lie that's why i like your stats the stats just do not lie. You can't get away from them. And I think it's it's good. You know, look, we're in the beginning of May. So it's a great time for most people looking to sell. It's coming into spring. I know it doesn't feel it like that in the UK. Certainly a lot of uh, uh, photos that are being taken are not showing off the gardens well enough. But it just shows that the market is strengthening and it's getting better. And I think if it continues like this, by the end of the year, I think it's we're going to shock a lot of people on there, actually how the market's performing. Well, interestingly, the running average for the year is 31,826. So again, we're running on, on averages. And I know average is a very boring thing, but at the end of the day, I, who wants these spiky things? It, the You know, the property market's returning back probably to where it was before COVID. And I think, to, as we've always said, 2021 and 22 were absolutely strange years. And, I, you know, I know you could say, well, they were the good years. Well, was it good estate agency? Anyone could sell a house. Now it's good back where you actually have to get off your backside and do some work. Let's go back. The average price of a property coming on the market is 448,968. Um, thoughts on this one? 
Yeah, so this is average listing price, not average overall price uh, for, for property, just to make sure people don't get confused between the two. Yeah, I think, you know, look, you know, 2023, 448, 968, you know, it is high, isn't it, for an average price? I think we all have to admit that. But it just shows people have added a lot of value to their property. And it's one thing people don't talk about, you know, through COVID. I know we don't like to talk about it, but people were twiddling their thumbs, didn't have a lot to do. Um, so what did they do? They started renovating their houses. They started to build, you know, nice uh, garden offices, bars in the back garden. They they add a lot of value to, to your property, you know, landscape in the garden. They've added it all. So naturally, this is going to have an effect coming after, you know, 21, 22. And this is what we're starting to see, you know, that the prices, the average price has gone up if the if the owners have actually done the right job on the property yeah. not every property is going to be worth that uh, and i just want to point that out because i think some people do get confused between them some people some agents have said this is a sign of a valuing but i can remember when you when you adam and adam was a lad uh and you and i didn't have gray hair although i noticed uh, you, you're a little less gray now you've been on tv um <laughs> but, don't have less hair. <laughs> there you go. um there is a uh, in, there's a higher proportion of bigger houses coming on the market than there were in the last couple of years. And I think some of that is to do with the fact is that, you know, that people on fixed incomes like ink, but pensions who have the bigger properties have realized that they can't run their houses. So there's some larger properties coming on. Yeah, um, I, can, I can add to that, Chris, as well. And I think, you know, there, there is a, there is what we call like a four or five step, you know, in, in your property world, isn't there? Of, you know, first time buyers, then you're moving them into a bigger house. Then you're in your third house is typically your dream home you know, from that, your fourth and fifth one are where you've really stepped up. So obviously, when you're getting up to your average price, the bigger homes that are starting to sell, some people don't need their big houses anymore. And they're releasing them, they're getting the equity out of it, they're downsizing, and they've got a lot of money there in the bank to go and enjoy their retirement the rest of their you're life. Right. If you go and look at the stats, the amount of cash that people are sitting on is amazing. And if you think about it with, with uh, inflation, it you know, the real value. So some a lot of people are spending their money on homes. Okay, um, just have a quick look at the cumulative listings today. And again, the thing that screams at me there is 2020. That obviously we, you know, we've had three, four, five weeks now in 2020 compared on in terms of the weeks. And yeah. again, that just almost stood still. That stood still. Um, as you can see here, look, only 5,600, 5,698 listings. Um, let us go and have a look. Now, this is a fantastic graph, and this is one of the people's favorite graphs, is the actual number of listings per week compared to 17, 18, and 19. And again, we're not comparing with 2021, 20, 22, because they are exceptional years. Although on a few, I've got a new graph for you, James, where I have, just to just to counter the the, the, do, the, the people say, oh, you're only selecting certain stats. Yeah. Um, so what you've got there is, is that we've got the, the downward, trend on uh easter she's bounced back up and now she's leveled off again and you're going to say ah oh, the doom you know but again let's just think you know let's just let's just remember this is look there's easter in 2018 she dropped she went up she dropped again the orange she do drops for easter she yep. goes back up she drops again it is we are See, it's no variation it's normal it's just you, you know one swallow don't make a spring and one dip don't make a recession. Okay. Yeah. I like that phrase. And also, and also what you've got to remember is it's the first major holidays. Yes. We have a little one week off term, but this is the big two week break. A lot of people go on holiday and especially this is the main year that people have had their real freedoms to get out there. So they were going to take full advantage of it. So of course, if people are not in the UK, for example, or they're not in their home to sign their contracts then they can't put it on the market anyway. And remember, the, uh, with regard to the week, Monday the 1st of May was a bank holiday. So things are going to be, and again, there's more bank holidays this month than you could shake a stick at. So I think May is going to be a bit of a roller coaster. So again, it's all about overall trends. 100%, 100%. Right then, let's go and have a look at the number of price changes, which shows the agents working their stock. And we've got 17,446 price reductions. The average per week has been 17,634. Just shows agents are working their stock here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
Um, it also shows that some agents are overvaluing dramatically just to win listings. Um, it's a big, it's a big bugbear of mine, especially here in Birmingham and all where we cover our branches in the West Midlands, I should say. You know, I'm not I'm not gonna name names. I know people will love me to name names. Um, but wherever you know, everyone has this across across England and Wales, especially. There, there's certain agents that will go out and just tell the clients what they want to hear. You know, they want to know that the property's worth a fortune when it's when it's not worth that, uh, with a low fee usually. It's just to win the contract and this is where you see big price changes happening in the market from that and sometimes it cannot always give you a true reflection um you know on that so i think it is interesting if you look at 18 and 19 there which is really high you know that was when the market was really starting to spike as well if you remember um 2020 doesn't surprise me of course because of what happened but this is interesting 23 because what this is now is just starting to see i think owners are starting to come a lot more savvy and are starting to realize that if you are overpriced in the market now potentially it's costing you a lot of money from this so paying a, a cheap agent's fee we know that we know it goes out there and there's arguments for and against it but sometimes it will cost you a lot more money by doing this and it's starting to show now more and more so it's a really interesting stat down because that's a lot seventeen thousand. that's nothing to do with the market or the rates to me at the moment say people are reducing dramatically purely because of what the market's doing look you know mortgages you can still get fixed you know you've got them battling out fixed mortgages four percent you know at the moment for five years you fix the cheaper than 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 once they've been in the last probably seven or eight months so it is a great time for buyers still to buy today now it's not as good as 21 or 2020 for example or the first half of 22 but overall this is a good time still to get into the market the, the only best time to buy is when you want to buy it's as simple as that it is. You can't game the market. It's time in the market, not time in and out. Okay. Um, I'm intrigued what you think about that, Chris, as well. Uh, what? Thinking of what? About? About the price changes for that uh, for the week of 17,000. Um, I mean, the week before, we've been working on 20,000 and 20,000 the week before. And in terms of number of stock, the, in terms of total stock that's available for sale, on average, estate agents are only price changing around seven or eight percent of their properties per month. So whilst these do sound big numbers compared to the market, I think the magic thing with these stats is that the is the bad news that some of the newspapers, you know, some newspapers have an agenda to to sell more newspapers and bad news sells newspapers. So you could use it to your advantage. Really? <laughs> you know, I guess. I mean, let me get okay. So there's a certain newspaper called the Daily Something. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's a broadsheet. And I send them the, the good news stats every week and they will not publish them. As soon as they get a sniff of something a little bit, oh, it's been a dicey week. It's not they're like our tramp on chips. You'll you'll be on page one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, you know, I think the magic thing is the state agents must use this stats, you know, selectively use it to get your price reductions, although you should you be price reducing them anyway if you put them on the market too much that's your call i personally am not as i said a big fan of it but i think the magic the magic thing is this is it's your you are the gatekeepers to the second most important topic in the world to the brits which is first the weather and second the property market it's your responsibility to use these statistics to your advantage to inform and tell people exactly what's happening now that doesn't mean that you've got to be all fluffy and wonderful and everything it's awesome because it isn't it's bloody hard work out there being an estate agent and getting some buyers and i'm hearing some stories that you know there's lots of people buy uh, viewing but not buying yeah it's back to the good old days of actually being deal makers and not order takers like we were in 21 and 22 very and true that we've had it now for the first time in a long time where buyers are backing out uh, two, three months into the transaction because they've seen another property that they now want to proceed with. We haven't seen that for a long time. So we are definitely into the buyer's market again. Um, and this is where pricing is really important because you know it's not just about looking good on the portals or on your own website. It's about getting the right amount of buyers through the door for that client and securing the best price possible. The market will always dictate where, where it wants to go. I mean, I think the magic the magic thing is is that agents must take this data and use it to their advantage because data will always beat emotion because it's hard facts. And it scares me that estate agents, you are property experts, 
But if you don't use the data in front of you to actually back up what you are trying to prove, then basically you're glorified. I'm sorry to say this, you're glorified salesmen or saleswomen. Yeah. You know, the most valuable com com commodity is information. Use it to your advantage. Data really powers everything we do. I agree. We, you know, the, the property stats are all over it. So use these stats to your advantage. Right. Okay. Let's get back and have a look. What else are we looking at? Do you know, it's all good for We're flying along nicely. Number of properties sold. This is more like it. 22,000. Okay. So how does that compare to what's happening? So we've done 22. Now, last week was 26,000. The week before was 24. The week before that was 19. 20, 24, 23, 23, 23, 23, 22. So there seems to be a tonality around that early 20s. Yeah. Okay. yeah. That makes that makes about sense. When you when you look at the drop off, you know, around Easter time, et cetera, as well, then you sort of see that that little spike. And I'm sure if we if we if we looked at a graph for you know a few weeks beyond, you know, we'll see a drop off and it catches up as conveyances showing how good they are. Uh, that they will allow to catch up and you know stretch their stretch their legs and work a bit harder to uh, to push a few more through. But you can see that look, you know, on the graph here. Apart from twenty one, which was a strange year, as I say, for me that was the best time you'd be buying a property. I'd be amazed if you asked, uh, you know, how many estate agents bought a property in twenty 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 one. I bet you there's a good amount of them bought it because they knew that it was one of the best times to 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 buy. But look at that 27, 2018, which would have been classed as normal markets, you know, from all this uh, into that twenty twenty five thousand. So at 23, you know, week 18, you know, 20 to just under 22 and a half thousand. That just shows you that the market is where it needs to be, exactly what we're used to. There's there's no downfall, there's no, there's no major uh, upward trend as well. So let's look at it on both ways. It's it's a normal market, which is where, we, in other words, you have to work hard to get these properties sold. Okay, so let's now move on and look at uh, let's just pull this up. Right, hold on. There we go. Pull that back. Right then. Okay. So the accumulative gross sales were up to 390,000 so far. And again, you'll see from 2020, that's going backwards because we had no houses selling for about three or four, uh, eight, eight, it was seven or eight weeks, wasn't it? And we are, we have now caught up with 2017. And if we're not careful, we're going to be catching up with 18 and 19. Again, we're not comparing ourselves to 21 and 22. But moving on swiftly, because this is the this is the graph that people like to see. Again, here is our roller coaster. Yep. So pink is gross sales, and that's twenty three, and then we're comparing it with nineteen, eighteen, and again, she's all over the place, like it was with listings. Again, jump in at any time. Um, I mean, now th now this is again an important thing. The average price of a property selling in the UK is three hundred and seventy three thousand nine hundred this week compared to the average listing price of 448,000. So there is a nearly a 75 grand gap. That doesn't mean that they're, they're overvalued by 75. It just means that more of the lower price properties are actually selling. So thoughts on this graph, James? Yeah, exactly. So again, as I mentioned earlier, definitely uh, a yearly you know variance that we would expect. You know, it's pretty normal in our industry to dictate when we expect drop offs and peaks uh, from this. So you can see that's exactly what's happening here. Um, and and there's no major there's no major shock. What what's interesting is just that 19 actually took a little bit longer before it dived. If you notice in 23 we've done so it's done a sort of a swap over. And I'm sure if we did look at 19, I'm not an overall betting man, but I'm sure probably Easter was later or something like this that will probably account for that within the weeks. And it's interesting then what you said about the £75,000 difference, because every region is going to be different. Every area is going to be different, you know, from that to show what's coming on and what's selling. And as you say, some lower price to going. Now, what will be interesting, um, and I know we're not going into it, but are they being buying for homes or are they being bought for investments as well? Which would be intriguing to know that that answer uh it was not one we'll ever find out but it'll well, be interesting we, well we can find out through the ons right. publishing the stamp duty uh yeah 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 because of the three because of the surcharge so i reckon a lot of them will be going to buy to let as people have been you know have been uh sitting wondering what to do in about a couple of years a lot of pent-up money as we all know um and they've been buying properties to to rent out as well it's interesting. I, I, as you'm sure you're aware, I ghostwrite articles for estate agents on their local property markets, and the stats show that one of the, the other biggest people buying in the last twelve months have been first-time buyers. Nearly yes. one in three buyers have been first-time buyers. 
um, with an average deposit of somewhere in the order of 23, 25%. You yeah. need big numbers. So bank of mum and dad are coming to the to the rescue on that one. I wish my mum and dad had given me uh, um, a deposit at that level. Um, well, right. I, think so, I think the average now is about sixty one, sixty three thousand pounds is the average first time uh, buyer deposit at the moment. Good stuff. Right, let's move on. So net sales is total number of uh, gross sales that week less fall through. So again, yeah. just for anyone who's not an estate agent. Um, a, a property takes an average 19 weeks to get a property from a, a sale agreed and price agreed to getting exchange and completion when it's legally tied up. You might have 100 properties in that chain. And that week, if two sales fall through out of that chain, those are considered two sale fall throughs. If you've sold 10 that week, then 10 have gone in. Two have gone out, so your net sales is eight. I know, apologies for any estate agents that know that. I know it's uh, page one stuff, but some people out there are not estate agents who watch this. And it's important we show you what that actually means. So net sales, we're on 17,644. Um, we are slightly behind the, the curve, especially, you know, 18 and 19, we're up at 20,021, and we're at 17. What surprised me, 2022 was a low figure, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Well, 2022, you could sort of see why there was a lot of incentives were coming out uh, sort of this time as well. So um, you expect to see that little change, you know, on it. And people were wondering what was starting to happen. Um, for me, I, I think it's a nice figure. I get that we're behind 28 and 2019, but that they were years where things were really bolstering up and the market was starting to well, not, not run away but it was getting a lot busier than what people were expecting. I think the interesting one is 17 for there. If you looked at 17, 2017 was seen as pretty much a normal a normal year, if you had to really go back. So if you look at it there, we're just slightly above it. Now, that they're good. You know, if you take the fall-throughs as well, I'm not sure what figure you're running off fall-throughs as well at the moment, because um, obviously I only go off mine as, as an agency rather than what... Overall. Right, well, there you go. So the fall-throughs, we we, skip, we did skip the yeah. fall-throughs, so well spotted. 4,717 this week, yeah. um, which it represents a fall-through rate of 21... We'll come to that graph in a second. 21.9. Now, remembering that the, the average fall-through rate in the UK for the last seven years has been 24.7%. And the fall through rate in that awful quarter four was 38, 39%. Yeah. And if you look at that, if if, the, if it was that bad, you know, so far in, in the week, if, if you look at it, if the property market was that bad, 5,299 is not that many looking at all the other years. You know, there was no reason, you know, when you look at it in 2019. Well, that we, is, that 5,299 is the average for the whole, not just week. Oh, sorry. So, sorry. Yeah. That's so if you look not, at the 4,717, you know, it's yeah. lower. When you think people are saying about cost of living, you know, interest rates, you know, all, let's look at all the negative stuff that could affect the property market. And we are still on less uh, in 2023 and week 18 than what we have been in all the normal years that you would expect to look at it. Indeed. Right. So we're doing net sales. Accumulative net sales year to date is, again, a great judge of where we are, because this is basically agents. This is houses that are actually going to get go away and sell. I mean, at the moment, looking at these stats, we are probably going to finish on around 900 to 950,000 transactions. OK, which remember, we had 1.4 two years ago and we had about 1.1, 1.2. So we are on a lower number of transactions, which means that there are fewer houses to sell, which means estate agents, you're going to have to put your fees up if you want to earn the same amount of money. Um, we're presently, as I said, 93% of the 17, 18 or 19 average. That was 94. But remember, we've got the, this rocky Easter period, and that was as low as mid 80s uh, a few weeks ago. So interesting. Now, this is a new graph which I've brought in, and I've now brought in 21 and 22 to compare. So this is res UK residential net sales week by week. The pink is 23, the blue is 22, the green is 21, the yellow is 20, and the white dots is just the average of 17 to 19. So the first thing that sh that's showing at me is, is that 23 versus 17 to 19 is almost identical. You've got the yellow of 2020 when the net sales fell through up through the roof. And you can see that where the green and the blue are for 21 and 22. Again, just it was just I think it was just important just to give an up flavor of how we do compare with 21 22. But yeah, 100 You would have thought that was more though, wouldn't you? In your mind, you would have thought that would have been stratospherically more, but it wasn't. 
Yeah, I think I think for twenty one especially because I think a lot of people had, as I say, a lot of money saved away and were making that decision to buy bigger houses, move to the countryside, move away more from the cities. Um, you know, there, there was a lot of that going on, um, especially you know, um, you, you know, from that. What's interesting though is, that, like we said, you know, good agents will be speaking to their clients now and will be referring to two thousand seventeen nineteen because they're real stats. Effectively, none of us knew twenty 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 one and twenty two what the market was really doing. You know, back end of 22, we could have because we knew what was going to happen with the announcements. But, you know, 2020 and 2021, it took all of us by surprise of what was going on. But if you had to compare, you go back to 17, 19, as you're quite well showing there, Chris, look, there's not much difference in it. In fact, I would actually say, you know, if you look at it, certain parts, 23, there is that little dip. But apart from that, we're starting to outperform, you know, slightly, you know, and it, it just shows that shows how strong the market is of where it is and what we class as a normal market, you know, but it's not really a normal market. It just shows what the demand is still, you know, it's normal demand, you know, that we need in, in the England and Wales, especially just to, for people to own their houses. Good stuff. Right. Um, we don't spend much time on this one, but this is really for data geeks. This, some of this goes over my head. Gross sales as a percentage of listings. So she's again, um, anything, any, just shout up. I'm just going to go through these and unless you say stop. Um, Fall throughs as a percentage of sales. Again, the long term average is twenty four percent. Well, that's an well, the big one interesting there is twenty twenty especially because I think that was really when people were starting to bite of they were they were really if, I haven't got it for him, but I'm sure that's when furlough was really starting to get talked about and getting pushed into. Um, you know, people were getting worried. We would have seen a drop off dramatically because you weren't going to get the normal mortgage. You would have had an 80% mortgage if you were on the, the full furlough. So we expect that to jump. But what's interesting, again, 2023, look at it, 20, 21.09. Yeah, that's where we sit yep. today, you know, and I'm all about the market today. You know, you know, we can talk yep. about what what it was, what it was like, and we know history can repeat itself, but we have to go on timing is everything in the property game. So we have to talk about today. But if we look at it from again, 17 uh, and 18 there, again, just look at the figures. They're virtually, you know, apart from 18, which which took quite an interesting little uh, dive there, there was less. But, but again, know, this is this is a week on week. Just you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. But seventeen and nineteen, just looking on that week alone, it's virtually identical. But again, look, the seven year average for all seven years yeah. for all the, all the you 24%. know the seven times fifty two weeks, twenty four percent. Give you an idea, the average is twenty four point two, and last quarter Q four was thirty eight thirty nine percent. So you know things are going okay. Price changes as a percentage of listings shows that agents are working their stock. And at 55%, it does show that the agents are working their stock. But remember, it was slightly lower on the listings this week. Um, shall we now dive in and look at some of the stats from the um from the uh from the mad the from the spreadsheet of justice? I've just named it that one. It's um it's a massive beast of a spreadsheet. Can you see that spreadsheet on the screen? Okay, so um, for boys and girls, the, these spreadsheets have been screen dumped, and there is a link on the YouTube, in the YouTube description where you can download these and have a look at them. Green is good, red is bad, and white is somewhere in the middle. And you can quite clearly see the last week, week seventeen was a brilliant week, and we've just come back to a little bit more normal with the more whites here. But again, look at the whites here. Again, we just it's just an average market. Okay. Any, just shout up if there's anything you want to say. We're not going to spend a huge amount of time on this, and we're going to go and look at the regional figures now because people can download them. But remember, James, because this is your first show, green is good, red is bad, white is somewhere in the middle. Are you ready? Yeah, exactly. Look, uh, uh, luckily, I'm not colorblind, so that's good. Um, but uh, <laughs> so, so I, think, we... I just think what's interesting is look at the greens. You know, you know, on there, and we're talking in 23. You know, all we've heard this year is negativity, negativity within the marketplace, especially as you say in a lot of the media because they need their sell, they need to sell more papers or get more people to subscribe online. But look at it, the market is defying what all the so-called experts are putting out there. Um, and I think it's interesting, um, you know, on that, that we are, we, you know, it, I think it will take a lot of people by surprise of how well the market is performing. Uh, you know, I am one of them. I think it's doing better than my expectations. But as you know, I, I'll comment in the media and I've been saying, forget what the negativity people are saying, you know, all these so-called experts, because they've always been wrong. They normally always are wrong. Look at the data. The data can not lie. And I think it's exactly showing it's the aspirations to own homes, you know, week on week there is very positive. It's very simple that, 
you know, and if you look at if we're looking at here in the east east of England and East Midlands, it, it's very easy to see that one, we don't build enough homes in the first place to cope with demand, and then that just has a knock on effect all the way through into the resale homes. Good stuff. Right, let's move on to the. Um, so we're just going to spend a few minutes looking at. So what is interesting is this: is that we had a dip from last week, which was an exceptional week, and all the regions have dipped by almost the same percentage. I find that really weird that somewhere in Swindon is going to dip the same amount as Chelmsford. Weird that it all kind of goes in synchronicity. I thought uh, it is, especially the, the interesting one is the listings, though, because if you look at it, it's where if you are a savvy, uh, a savvy person for holidays, it was the best time to take your holidays without using up uh, all your holidays from your employer. Right then. OK, so let's. Um, Let's, so this is in a London. Again, a big one that I'm really interested in is the percentage difference between listing price and sale price. And again, in London, we are beginning to get into the into the early 30s. OK, yeah. rest of the UK has been hanging around. We'll just have a quick look. The average in the UK here has been around the 17 or 18 percent mark knocking on the door of 20. But London have really if you take London out. I mean, if you just have a quick look here, East Midlands. 8%, 19%, 11%, 14%, 14%, uh, East of England, 15 12 The gaps between the two, which means that estate agents are putting on good price properties that are actually selling what's in London. There is a higher propensity of bigger houses coming on the market, but the lower stuff is selling. 100%. Okay. Um, again, these are all available to download uh, at your heart's content and just compare. Have a look at, you know, look in your town. What is actually selling? on what is actually uh, coming on the market and, and spot those trends because how, by spotting those trends, you get the right properties on that actually sell. Because don't be honest, we all love the big stuff that looks good with the pretty pictures, but if it ain't going to sell. And, and also, Chris, I think you've just hit there what the trend is. Uh, and for the estate agents who are watching this, you've got to monitor the trends. So for a London, I work very closely with a very one of the biggest independent uh, agents in London. Um, listen to a lot of advice, been going a lot longer than I have. Uh, and like you said, it's about the trends in London at the moment. New builds in London are coming back, you know, you know, in a massive way, you know, and people are snapping them up, which will affect the, which will change the figures because as they're coming to completion, they're coming through, et cetera, et cetera, where the, the resale market might be taking a bit longer sometimes, but that might not happen in your local area. It could be exactly different. But if you're an estate agent thinking, well, hang on a minute, people seem to be, especially first time buyers, typically always go new because they want it to be new, shiny, it's exciting. Get into them developers, get into them smaller developers in the suburban areas, form your relationships and get selling them. I can't disagree with you on that one, mate. Um, I, 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 One that screams at me is, look at the percentage difference between listing price and sale price in outer London. So inner London is all the core postcodes of SE, SW, E, N, NW, and the central postcodes, whilst outer London is everything else around that including the M25, a little bit beyond the M25. Look at this. The the average the average is 9%, whilst in inner London, it's over 30%. Yeah. So what the hell is happening in London? What are the bigger houses coming on that they're not selling? We don't know. Um, Scotland, southeast, again, the southeast seems to be doing quite well. You've also got to remember in inner London, a lot of the big buyers are tied up with a lot of other things going on politically around the world at the moment. True, but inner London does include your Kingston's and your Richmond's. It's not just prime London. It, it is you know, all the way up to Edgware and it's out to, to Wembley and it's out to Loughton. It will not just, just be up just before Loughton. I, I personally think, you know, I don't cover London as an agent, but I do obviously have friends in London and we speak to them and, and find out. And obviously as I speak to other agents and I think what you're starting to see is people are just starting to move slightly out. They're realizing that actually, you know what, we can put up with the journey every day. You know, we can, you know, a crowded tube or whatever the case may be with the trains, you know, but they might just get that little bit more value for money. They might just get that bit more space that they want and they're craving for. And I think what you have is what's now being created is what's called a polar effect, where people are living more on the outskirts. And I know London's a big place. And when you go out and to, when you come onto the outskirts, it is like you can step into a different place anyway. But, you know, they can have a better lifestyle. You know, and I think what you're getting is people don't want to travel into the main cities as much. They would rather stay of where they're living, support their independent shops, restaurants, cafes, florists, etc., and really do it. And if, if high streets can follow some of the trends that you do see, especially in outer London, they would be booming up and down the country. 
fantastic insight. Thank you, James. Right, boys and girls, we've done the national picture. We have looked at the regional stuff. Please do download those for your personal benefit. We are now going to move on to the third section of the programme where we actually pick a town or a city and really deep dive in. And um, we're going to go to Reading today, James. I don't know if you've ever been. I've been once. It's, um, I believe it is, uh, it's not even a city, even though it's a massive place. Oh, uh, there you go, eh? All good stuff. Right then. So let us go and have a look at the lovely statistics. Okay, here we go. So we are using the data from 20 EA Insight. Uh, as everyone knows, the all the data that we've used so far has come from 20 EA Insights, and you can have this platform for your own estate agency and letting agency so you can judge where this stuff's coming from. Uh, they have not paid me to do this. This is a platform that you can pay for. It is reasonably priced. Do not mention my name because I'm not being paid to recommend them. It's just that I'm a bit of a fanboy, and the deal is I use the platform, share it with you boys and girls in the state in the agency land, but in return, I mention where the stats come from. And this is their insights platform. I don't know if you have it yourself, James, but if you don't, it is it's like most things. It there's there's you know, it's it's how you interpret the data yeah. and what you get out of it. So we are used so the purposes of this, boys and girls, the and I've just written this down. For the purposes of reading, we're using postcodes RG1, 2, 5, 6, 30, and 31, which is core reading, or that's what it appears when I've looked on the map, okay? And the first thing we're going to do, James, is look at the agents that are involved. So should we delve and just just, just shout up if you, if you see anything? So in reading... The average price of a property, so we're going from the 1st of the first 21 through to yesterday, which is the 9th, the average price property that's come onto the market is 384,000 and 12,000 have come on the market. Let's remember that 384, because then that gives us an idea of where each agent is in the marketplace. So we're gonna start off with Parkers at number one, okay? And you can quite clearly see here that they appear to be rough, you know, they've been bouncing around between 10 and 15%, but, and they're obviously having a fantastic May, but again, yeah, definitely. yeah okay. And there's their average is 395. So again, they play, appear to be a middle of the road estate agent. Okay, let's look at Romans. Again, they've been hovering around that 10% mark. Um, yeah. uh, corporate estate agent, um, good operator, by the way. I've got a lot of time for them. Big, big, Not, big, big dip there though, at the end. Where Parker's had the up the uptake. Yes, but again, as I said, what you know, we're only dealing with one month in and nine days of it. So it's probably we need to take them the last with a pinch of salt. It's more the direction. Um looking at pros, prospect 330. So they obviously deal with the lower to middle market because their average is 330. And it appears their market share has been drifting down slightly. Um let's go and look at white knights. They're at 398. And again they've been hovering around that five percent mark up and down a bit. Haslams, they're growing aren't they? They are indeed. They're really yeah, definitely yeah. um 391 as well. Samsung and George, let's have a look at them. Again they're hovering around that four percent mark. Let's go and look at village properties again. They've had a cracking May, but again, one swallow doesn't make a doesn't make a summer or a spring. Um, uh, Davis Tate. They, I think, they're part of the LSL group. If memory serves you well, well look at that uh, average property price. So they're definitely yeah, doing, they're doing all right, aren't they? Uh, four three one uh, purple bricks. Well, look at that graph. That's showing everything we need to know. <laughs> <laughs> Chancellors um, again around the three percent mark. Um, yeah, just I mean, it's just interesting to see anyone who's not from Reading. This is going to be as boring as hell. But again, the wonderful thing about this is that we can actually go and have a look at. So we can see the new number of new instructions that have been coming on the market. We can actually change this so we can go look right. Give me everything of all the posh agents in. So this is the this is the million pound mark, and we can quite clearly see that um, well, there's not many properties in Reading. So we'll go over seven fifty. Here we go. That's a bit better. So Parker seem to be the big daddios when it comes to the posh stuff. Rome, okay. Um, interesting. There's a lot more bigger posh houses coming on the market, James, isn't there? There is, yeah. And I think that's obviously where we could probably see the downsizing starting to happen. 
you know, where people want to release that money in, in their property and use it for better things going forward. Yeah. Interestingly, we looked at last week, the number of million pound properties that are coming on the market in the UK has jumped significantly in the last three or four weeks. Okay. So, and we can change this to solds and withdrawals and things like that. We're not going to spend too much time on that one, but you can do this on this software. I think, um, I think what's interesting is you say for people in Reading, it's interesting. I think for all of us, it's interesting is the actual property count. So if you went back and put them all, is looking at the amount of properties each agent's got and how you're having to service that as well. And, you know, I think that's that's a really interesting one for me. Well, this what's, is, what's okay. your sweet spot? Well, so again, this, this particular graph here shows the number of properties that are available at any one time in Reading at any one time. So the, you know, 21, 22 and 23, you can see the color codes. Interestingly, the number of properties that are for sale in April 23, I mean, again, you've got, we've got to wait to the end of May before we get the final figures. But how, this is interesting. Look, more properties for sale in Reading in 21 than now. Well, now that's that's interesting because mostly it's the other way around. Normally, we'd expect a step up, 21 being the, the lowest, then 22 a bit more, and 23, that's what we found elsewhere. Um, just have a quick look, see how all the agents are doing and what their stock levels are. Okay, so again, this is going to be very similar to to new listings it looks like romans are on the unfortunately they're on a slight dip uh prospect again on a slight dip uh oh dear right now haslam's we said haslam's are doing really well so that's good sansom and george they're doing well village okay purple bricks oh there you go davis tate they're doing all right and chances as well so we can have a look at that so let's move on and look at um the um, this is my my favorite. I don't know if you've ever seen one of the shows, but but this is looking at how efficient is an estate agent, okay? And you can look, at, I find it fascinating that estate agents are always interested at the front end, about new listings, new listings, new listings. Talk about the back end. Let's look at the back end, because if a property leaves an estate agent, it's either for two reasons. One, it's exchanged, or the other one, it's withdrawn, okay? And interestingly this, here we go. Look, Parker's, Biggest estate agent in in Reading. Normally, biggest doesn't mean best. But they've got an exchange ratio of 75.97%, which means for every 100 houses that they put on the market, they'll exchange on 75. Roman's at 71, but Prospect at, at 58. Now, yeah. that, if I was Parker's there, I would be shouting out that I have, you know, a, probably a 20%, because if you're working out some proportional, that's a twenty early 20% greater chance Mrs. Miggins are selling. Yep. Has them, so it looks like they're doing all right. White Knights and Samson have a slightly better percentage. Um, but then, interestingly, look, we've got chances at a corporate at 43, um, which, again, not brilliant, is it? Um, interestingly, the average is 65, and we're going through, and there's lots of 70s. This is, this is lovely to see. And, again, do jump in if there's anything you want to say here, James. But normally, not, the, not, the, not that I'm picking on them with recent news, but I think it's interesting that they went, I think it was ninth, and then they're on 15th on this list. So if they're charging whatever their latest fees are, £1,200, £1,400 that you're going to pay no matter what, and just, uh, you know, and you just look at it and you just think that's awful, you know. Yep. Well, well, hold on, give them their due. 75% is not bad, but all the other competition are doing 75 yeah, yeah but not, not they're not listing enough to do it all and i think you've got to look at the price and, and also the fall through rates as well yes I think, you know, that's 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 they're the key stats as well you know when you're judging an agent to work well, on, again a fall through, so if it, it comes nope. if it falls through and stays in the system she goes at the front and she doesn't appear in these in these stats it really comes down to exchange versus withdrawal we're going to look at the price changes in a second interestingly you've got the likes of roger platt who i believe are a corporate um, and um, let's just have a quick look what else we've got. I mean, there's some low numbers here, 56. I don't know who Woodley's are. Uh, Chancellor's 43, like we said. That is pretty low. Let's just look at the price changes. Oh, and again, Avocado, we've got that self-employed model. Great people. Do look at them. I think uh, they're going places. I do. I've got a real soft spot for them, guys. Um, price changes. So Parker's are price changing at 48. Roman's at 47. Prospect at 56. It just, it, just shows, though, it just shows, though, doesn't it, between Parkers and Romans at the top there, just what a marketing machine they have. Because if you if you look at the market share they've got, the new instructions, even with the number of withdrawn properties there at the top and the higher fall through, they are still in the lead. So it just shows that... You Who's know, that, Romans? Yeah, and, and Parkers at the top there. Yeah, if you look at yeah. it, they, are, they obviously have a, a very great marketing machine. 
he's an independent. Yeah, it's great. As I say, marketing wise, they have it spot on. You can just tell straight away that they can afford, as you know, and it's something we would don't like to talk about, but they can actually afford to lose business here and still retain market share at the top. I mean, the wonderful thing here is this: is that look, you know, n- nearly five half every half every one in two houses gets price reduced, but then they actually go and sell it. What yeah. you've got here, you've got chances that reduce three and four houses, but are only able to shift four out four of ten houses. Okay, that's, interesting that's not a criticism of, of this. And again, if anyone's got any issues with these stats, please go and speak with 20 EA because they're the data that all the big boys use and you can have access to these no, stats. Absolutely, Chris. And I think you've hit a good point there because what would be interesting from them is for them to maybe comment in, uh, in the video to say how they actually do their valuations because it'd be intriguing which strategy do they go down. Well, we don't like to get we it would messy the show up and we don't want estate agents giving up giving us some fluff and what's name. Um I know <coughs> you're an estate agent, but you're not here with your estate agent's hat on you with your commentator. Interestingly, look, this is the number of how agents have grown in the last year. Haslam's have grown by 25, Davis 15, Chancellors by 15, but purple bricks down by 42 and white knights down by 12. Um, this is a nice little graph here that I just want to show you. Here is is you you can you've got number of properties versus average price. So Parker's um, and again, if you just move, you just play it there, you can see um, what's happening to their prices. So where are they move? So if they move out to the right, it means they've got more houses out to the left, less houses. If they go up, the average price goes up. So you just, it's lovely to have a play with this and just see which where the agents are, are, are working. Um, let's move on and talk about how quickly properties sell. No, you know, as you said, obviously, maybe for commentary. I think what's interesting there's one thing always to look at stats. You know, if you're the biggest in the area, you have more to lose. You know, if you're smaller, you have everything to gain and everything to attack to uh, to challenge. And I think, and that's what you start to see from some of the smaller, the smaller agencies. There, they're they're really, you know, really getting it together to start challenging the ones at the top to say, you know what, it's about time we start taking a bit of the business. Well, well, one of the things that, you know, you can't match them on money in terms of their marketing budget, but at the end of the day, there's this thing called Facebook. I don't know if you've heard of it, James. And basically, what you, it's a fantastic new bit of kit, and you can talk to thousands of people for free in your town by joining the local Facebook groups and then producing content. But this is the bit where every agents go wrong. They start talking about themselves, like the person at the party who talks about themselves. If you give them great stats, hey, if only there was this great place where we could find stats on our local town, James, about how many how many houses are selling and house prices, it'd be wonderful, wouldn't it? God, dear, we probably could call it the land registry, or we could call it Zoopla uh, price index, or we could call it insights from 20EA. Guys and girls, the data is out there. Use it to your advantage. The trick, um, the trick, one of the biggest tricks, and, and as, as you say, you're hitting it on the head here, because what a lot of people really get wrong is like you say they, they will talk about themselves and there is a certain way you can do that uh on it but you've got to remember the customer you're after it's what do they want what are they after what, what you know what what do they you know if they're in if they're in uh, reading here they're interested in reading house prices they're interested in when's the trend is it the right time to sell should we hold on now you know etc cetera, etc cetera. they want to know what's going on you know and you might have to do that through various different means of marketing as well some people Video, like to, uh, words yeah, yeah somebody like to read blogs and read you know long they might want newsletters some people like videos they might want a podcast you know, you've just got to think of different things to reach your different audience and put the time and effort in. But as you can see clearly from that previous one with some of the agents there, they obviously are starting to do some real clever marketing to start to eat at different parts of the market share. Good stuff. Right. This is the how long it takes an agent to sell a house. So we've got new instruction to solve the contract here. So obviously Winkworth seems to be the daddy is there. Let's just have a quick look. So um, hold on. There we go. White Knights seem to sell them the quickest. And then we've got sold up the contract to completion. So that's how long your sales agreed uh, your sales pipeline person is doing. So let's just see who the best is there. So that's, and... in, so that's interesting because if you notice, it's sort of reversing now a little bit the charts that the ones with the most are taking the not the longest, but are taking longer to sell. Now that might have something to do with the higher price properties. Typically always take longer to to get through to uh to completion anyway, also subject to contract. Yeah. So, so- Quite clearly here, Winkworths and Haslam's are the ones that will get your house sold quicker. You might have to wait a couple of weeks for Parkers and, but, and then Romans, then Lansley's at 189. Let's just have a final quick look at the lettings. Now, again, the letting stats have been all over the place because many agents have not been listing their properties. But I think it's just a, 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 an idea of where we are. 
Open Rent is a, is a website which uh, goes on, to, uh, puts their properties on for private landlords. So it just gives you a flavor of where they are. Romans are in at the uh, number one, well, really number one in terms of agents. Haslam's coming in at number two with Adams and Winkworths. Quite clearly see that Haslam's have really have pulled their socks up in terms of the number of new properties they're putting on the market. But whether that's just because more of their tenants are leaving, you don't know. That's the problem with lettings. But again, it's just a flavor of where you stand in the marketplace. There's obviously a student market as well in 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 reading as well but we'll just have a quick look at there, what... is, there is and, and and obviously obviously as you know i have a student background so what'll be interesting is is that will reverse at certain times of the year because it's all about the academic year and when people want to secure the accommodation so i think you can you can write the student one off there because that's going to change all the time at, at the right point so of course it is we don't want to boy the board but there are actually graphs on this which shows you month by month so you can take the student stuff out okay um What's what? interesting though shows you how buoyant lettings is though. If you look at that, it just you know it, it shows it's a great business to be in into lettings, but it's a lot of hard work, obviously. I'm sure behind the scenes. Okay, so um, these these are some interesting stats, and what we've done here is this: is that we've looked at the these are additional stats, which I just wanted to share with the boys and girls out there in estate the agency land. This is the average. The, the, with this graph, we can uh, we we can uh, tell what's going to happen to the land registry figures seven months in advance. Okay, and you can quite clearly see that the, the, the so this is the average price per square foot on sale agreed by month by month. So you can quite clearly see here that um, that it that the average price. I know it says East Midlands there. It isn't. It is actually the UK figures was three hundred and forty six pounds, and then she dropped off throughout the summer and the autumn and she dropped off to January at 332 pounds so she she went from 346 to 332 which is a reduction of about four or five percent which is expected based on the budget uh, but if you then look at what's happening to the nationwide and the Halifax index they've dropped off okay but remember these are six this is six months in advance of the land registry and the Halifax and nationwide. Look at this 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 dip here. And all of the I've got some I've got some stats here, which um I'm I'm presently writing an article for my clients at the moment. We are use these stats quite clearly show that in all regions the price paid per square foot has been increasing in the last three or four months. So I'm predicting here that the land registry will continue to drop and probably later in the summer will will start to come back up yep because we're dealing with these stats and what we've what I've done here is I've matched the pound per square foot on sale agreed back to 2019 the first the jan first and this 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 line matches within a couple of percent all the way back to 19 exactly what's been happening in the land registry 6 or 9 months so this is advanced knowledge of, of what's coming boys and girls um again in, I, I don't know if you find that interesting or not but um um what's your uh, let me just go and find some other stats which could be of interest to you james just give me a second and um two seconds before we go and i'll just go open this up here we go All right then so uh so um this is a particularly interesting graph which shows um another way of what's happening in the property market price wise so again this is this is more of a graphical representation versus the graph that i've just shown you the other one these stats come from bricks and logic they are matching what i'm suggesting as well um and then i think another graph which i just want to show you is estate agents pipelines can you see the pipeline graph yeah i can yeah this is agents pipelines going back to 2017 you can quite clearly see that we are you know we had that awful drop off but pipelines are looking okay and are about three or four percent on average more than than what's that was 17, 18, and 19. Uh again, uh th these are available to do to download if In, you want interesting to. there, Chris. If you can go back to it as the color chart, the heat chart, if you want to call it. The which one? The the, the, heat, chart, one. the heat chart, yeah. Yeah, okay. Can you see that now? Nope. Right, let's just hold on. Yeah. No, I can. So it's interesting there uh, when you look at the east side of England, 
uh, from that, where you would you would have sort of expected that to be the other way around. You would you know, when you're looking at it because they're the ones with very much the big uh, the big transport links into London as well. You know, you know, they're a lot more they're a lot more efficient to get in compared to you know onto the west side uh, a lot of it. So it's quite I, interesting to see. And also, you know, if you look at the north and if you look at that south that south north divide as well, look at that. The north now is starting to be, you know, five percent plus. Again. Um, it, let me just show you this. You can actually the bricks and logic again not being paid to say this, but just big big fan of property data. You can go down to this sort of level. In fact, you can drill down even closer. Um, but this gives you a flavour of what's happening. Um, interesting times. Interesting times. Um, James, let's wrap it up. Um, what are your final thoughts on these stats and your message to estate agents watching this? Uh, very positive, actually. I, I think, uh, you know, the, stat, the stats are pretty much where we would expect them to be. Uh, you know, you have to take the last few years out. And I know estate agents can get bored of hearing that, um, but it's still fixed in a lot of clients' head are comparing to 21, 20, you know, beginning of 22. It's about the here and now. So it's got to be about how buoyant the market is at the moment. Are they likely to do a, a, a dip? They may do. You know, we, we don't have that crystal ball. They may do. It is what happens, you know, in, in, in the industry. But, oh, but you have to look at it overall. And I think overall it's looking very positive. I don't expect to see any major price drops uh, on there at all. I think if we'll see any, I think actually with certain news that's coming out if it does go out i think you'll find it'll be flatlined or a slight increase probably by the end of the year and that's quite ballsy saying it uh, there's not many people are saying that at the moment but you only have to look at the stats and the demand that's going forward and i think it's people need to be positive but i think when you look at it what you're showing is it's a buoyant market but you've got to work and you've got to work hard to get it you need to be creative give the clients what they want it's not about what you want to give them it's about what they want and if they want to know about house prices trends what's selling what's not selling then you need to be getting into that data and providing them that they can have access to this so they can make informed decisions absolutely right i've always said that the property market every property market makes a market the supply and demand where is supply and demand there's always a market um You've got to know your market. You have to understand the trends. You've got to research the sale, take those risks, make sure that your, your colleagues and your staff are not trained but necessarily developed because they might not be used to this market. There are people who who are, if they're not, if, they're, if they haven't got a three in front of them, they haven't been in this sort of market where they've had to work hard. But, but at the end of the day, Every property market is made up of buyers, sellers, and estate agents, and it's your job to find the balance to unlock that opportunity in that market. Use what use the data that's in front of you to your advantage, and you'll be on to a winner. James, you've been absolutely fantastic in your insight. Thank you for your insight. I, I'd like to say publicly, I'd like to invite you back in about a month, month's, uh, six weeks' time, because I found you absolutely fascinating. It's good to get another point of view on the show i'd like to thank you boys and girls for watching this show and please do put in the comments any areas that you want me to look at um i'd like to thank 20 ea for their data as i'd also like to thank bricks and logic for their data again do contact them as i said don't mention my name it's not it's not for me but you've seen the data and the power of data to get to be the the figure of the pulse on the property market look forward to seeing you boys and girls next week on week 19 of the property show where we will be having the wonderful brian mansell uh back again uh to comment on the market and we'll see you on the other side thank you james and thank you for everyone for watching thanks Dan.